Section two of the Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne Spiegel. Journal of the Reverend Francis Asbury, Volume One, Section Two, January first to May thirteenth, seventeen seventy two. January 1st, 1772. I find that the preachers have their friends in the cities, and care not to leave them. There is a strange party spirit. For my part, I desire to be faithful to God and man. On Thursday evening, I preached my last sermon for a time, on First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 6. Let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. On Friday, Brother S. and myself, set out for West Farms, and I preached in the evening. On the Lord's Day I preach at Brother M's, at half-past nine, in Westchester at three, and at West Farms at six in the evening. A person showed me much kindness at West Farms, favoring me with a man and horse all the time I was there, acknowledging the word came home to his heart, and that he was wicked. My friend Hunt, who was a Quaker, said he never was so affected. The next day I went to Westchester, but had only a few to hear me. On Wednesday I preached at H's, and felt much divine power in my soul, and an opening among the people. I have found many trials in my own mind, but feel determined to resist. I see traps set for my feet. Thursday I preached at D's, and had an attentive people to hear, and felt myself warm and zealous. On Friday I went to Mernock and had a large congregation, and felt the divine presence. Many of the people also felt the power of truth, and sunk under the word. It was laid home to the hearts of the people, but some contradicted and blasphemed. I believe God has a work to do among the people in this place. Lord, keep me faithful, watchful, humble, holy, and diligent to the end. Let me sooner choose to die than sin against thee, in thought, word, or deed." Saturday, 13. I preached at one friend B's, where many attended to the truth and showed a willingness to hear. On the Lord's Day I preached at D's at ten in the morning, and three in the afternoon, and at six in the evening. Many attended, but I fear few felt such deep concern as will induce them to leave their sins and flee from the wrath to come. At Brother H's on Monday evening the house would not hold the congregation, there I felt liberty and power. I hope God will visit them. I have had many trials from Satan, but hitherto the Lord hath helped me against them all. I stand a miracle of mercy. Oh, that I may always be found faithful in doing his will. On Tuesday the 14th I went to Rye, but the people here are insensible. They cry, The church, the church. There are few Presbyterians, but they have suffered their meeting-house to go to ruin, and have lost the power of religion, if they ever had it. I was not a welcome messenger to this people. On Wednesday the 15th I preached at two in the afternoon at Mernock with some power, and in the evening returned, preached at Rye, to a large company, and felt my master near. Thursday 16, I was taken ill with a cold and chill. The next morning I rode to New City, but the cold pinched me much. On New City Island, a congregation was assembled to receive me. I spoke to them with some liberty, and they wished me to come again. A wise old Calvinist said he might experience all I mentioned and go to hell. I said, Satan experienced more than I mentioned, and yet has gone to hell. After preaching, I rode to Mr. B's, though in much pain. When I had preached there, I went to bed. During the whole night, I was very ill. My friends behaved very kindly, and endeavored to prevail upon me to stay there till I was restored, but my appointment required me to set off for Eastchester, where I preached, and rode near eight miles in the evening to New Rochelle. On the 19th, the Lord's Day, I preached three times, though very ill. Many attended, and I could not think of disappointing them. Monday the 20th, I rode to Pease Manor, and preached there at noon, and at six in the evening at P.B.'s in Rochelle. The next day I rode to D's, but the day was extremely cold. In the night I had a sore throat, but through the help of God I go on, and cannot think of sparing myself. No cross, 
no suffering i decline only let all my heart be thine tuesday the twenty first i preached at my friend d's for the last time on these things that ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do the people seemed deeply affected under the word in the morning of the twenty second i set out for the new city and preached there in much weakness and pain of body and in the evening i went to my friend p's that night i had no rest and when i arose in the morning the pain in my throat was worse on the twenty-third i came in a covered sleigh to my friend b's where i took up my lodging being unable to go any farther i then applied to a physician who made applications to my ears throat and palate which were all swelled and inflamed exceedingly for six or seven days i could neither eat nor drink without great pain the physician feared i should be strangled before a discharge took place but my god ordered all things well i am raised up again and cannot help remarking the kindness with which my friends treated me as if i had been their own brother the parents and children attended me day and night with the greatest attention thus though a stranger in a strange land god has taken care of me may the lord remember them that have remembered me and grant to this family life for evermore february five still i feel myself weak it is near a fortnight since i came to my friend b s dr w has attended me in all my illness and did all he could for me gratis yesterday was the first day of my going out i went to westchester to hear a friend preach my kind friends s and w brought up a sleigh from york on monday last but my friends at this place would not suffer me to go with them in the course of my recovery i have read much in my bible and hammond's notes on the new testament i have also met with a spirit of peace against predestination i did not expect to find such an advocate for general redemption in america this day i ventured to preach at mr a b s to his family and a few other people in the evening returned home and found mr d l the former governor's son there who lives in the woods near salem and invited me to his house we spent the evening comfortably together on thursday february seven i preached as i had appointed the man of the house being in a consumption though i had not many people to hear me yet i have reason to hope that my sermon did good to the poor invalid i felt affected for my friends in this place who had in some measure been moved by the word on my former visits but they are now returned to their old ways and company i found myself weak and unfit to preach but believe there were some who felt the word come close to their hearts may god help them to profit by it on february the eighth i set out for york in a sleigh and my friends seemed glad to see me i want to be less concerned about anything except my own work the salvation of souls at present i seem determined to consecrate my all to god body soul time and talents on the lord's day found myself weak but brother p being ill i preached in the morning and found life stayed at home on monday and read in mr wesley's notes on the old testament on monday the eleventh i went to the jail and visited a condemned criminal and preached to him and others with some tender feelings of mind on these words joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth tuesday the twelfth this day i have visited many of my friends from house to house and did not find much evil or much good stirring among them now i retire to hold communion with god and feel his power in the evening my strength increased and i preached with some freedom on wednesday i walked out but caught cold and returned home chilled and very ill in the evening when i went into the pulpit my every limb shook and afterward went to bed with violent pains in my bones the sickness continued for three days and kept me at home for above a week on thursday the twentieth i gave an exhortation in public having a desire to visit my friends on staten island i set off in the afternoon of the twenty first contrary to the persuasion of my friends in york s s who was tender towards me in my illness and took care of me as if i had been his father accompanied me justice w received us and entertained us kindly and though weak and weary i preached at p v p s to a few persons with much satisfaction mr d invited me to preach in his house to which i consented and justice w sent us there on the lord's day with several of his family i preached twice at that gentleman's house to a large company some it appeared had not heard a sermon for half a year such a famine there is of the word in these parts 
and a still greater one of the pure word i returned in the evening to justice w's and preached to a numerous congregation with comfort surely god sent me to these people at the first and i trust he will continue to bless them and pour out his spirit upon them and receive them at last to himself february twenty three i preached again at justice w's to many people and the lord was with me my labors increase and my strength is renewed though i came here weak yet after preaching three times i felt myself strong thanks be to god who hath raised me up from so low a state on the twenty fourth i preached at a w s at two in the afternoon to a large company and had an invitation to go to the south part of the island in the evening also i preached at the same place on the twenty sixth i preached at the ferry on my way to new york to a few people though some came two miles on foot after preaching i visited a young man who seemed to be at the point of death he was full of unbelief and i fear it was through his calvinistic notions thursday the twenty seventh we arrived in york i found brother p had set off for philadelphia in the morning in the evening i met the society and felt myself assisted and enlarged at night i slept with holy thoughts of god and awoke with the same thanks be to god after having preached in a large upper room at mr t s in amboy where many came to hear and i was much favored in my own soul an innkeeper invited me to his house and kindly desired that i would call on him when i came again friday twenty seven i set off on a rough-gated horse for burlington and after being much shaken breakfasted at spotswood fed my horse again at crosswicks and then thought to push on to burlington but the roads being bad and myself and horse weary i lodged with a quaker on whom i called to inquire the way he not only invited me to tarry all night but also treated me with great kindness the next day i rode to town very weary and on the lord's day preached in the courthouse to many hearers monday thirty after riding to new mills in company with some friends in a wagon i preached in a baptist meeting-house and was kindly received tuesday thirty one finding the people were divided among themselves i preached from these words this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son jesus christ and love one another and humbly hope my labor was not in vain the same night we came to burlington april two i came to philadelphia and finding brother b and brother w there was much comforted brother b's plan was that he should go to boston brother p to virginia brother w to york and that i should stay three months in philadelphia with this i was well pleased friday four we dined with mr r who cannot keep negroes for conscience's sake and this was a topic of our conversation saturday five this morning my mind was composed and serene april seven in the evening i preached to a very large audience in the church after preaching in the day to many poor mortals in the bettering house april eight we set out for bohemia to find mr w who had been at his own discretion that he might wait upon mr b in order to go to york for five months stopping at mrs withy's in chester footnote she kept the best inn on the continent and always received the methodist preachers and footnote to feed myself and my horse i inquired about preaching in that town and found this to be the house where mr b and mr p put up and that the people were pleased with methodist preaching after leaving word that i would call to preach there on my return i set off for wilmington expecting to meet mr w there but we accidentally met just as he was turning off to mr t s for lodging about four miles from the town he seemed glad to see me and willing to be subject to order the next morning mr w went on his way to philadelphia having a desire to go and see and hear how things went i desired him to call and preach at chester and i proceeded to the house of mr s a friend of the methodists and then rode on to newcastle and stopped at the house of brother f a tavern-keeper but a good man preached there to a few people but met with opposition and found the methodists had done no great good the courthouse here is shut against us but it is open for dances and balls and brother f has lost his company by receiving us however we were comforted together april ten set out for bohemia where i found that some mischievous opposers had thrown the people into confusion 
i have had serious thoughts of going to baltimore but the distance which is ninety miles seems too much at present april eleven found an inattention to study an unsettled frame of mind much insensibility of soul and a backwardness to prayer lord help me with an active warmth to move and with a vigorous soul to rise visited an old man who was sick with whom i had some conversation though not much but came away without prayer and was justly blamed both by my friends and myself i would have prayed with him but two men came in whose countenances i did not like and therefore neglected my duty through the fear of man i have nothing to plead to palliate my omission it is true that to introduce prayer among prayerless people is not an easy matter yet there is no excuse for me lord forgive both my secret and open faults my failings of omission and commission help me to have respect for all thy commandments and to be blameless before thee in all things lord's day eleven preached to-day at my friend h s as also the evening before the house was filled both before and after dinner the lord gave me great liberty and power and i humbly believe that some trembled under the word oh that it may not wear off i preached from these words the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget god after describing the wicked and showing wherein they forget god i attempted to prove the torments to be real and eternal from the real joys and duration of heaven monday twelve visited e t and saw his father who is a hundred years old or more he had lately lost his wife who was younger than he and in her he lost his nurse and earthly comfort tuesday thirteen was advised and invited to preach at wilmington which i did though there were but few to hear wednesday fourteen rode to chester and preached in the courthouse the church minister and many quakers were present but the congregation appeared to be the wildest i had seen in america but i humbly hope the labor was not all in vain in the morning i visited and spoke with great freedom to four men who were under the sentence of death thursday fifteen i rode through a heavy rain to philadelphia and preached the next morning with some freedom tuesday twenty my mind is quiet and serene i am now free from company which is very pleasing to me having found that much company is both disagreeable and dangerous wednesday twenty one met the society and found both life and liberty among the people this night brother w came in from virginia he gives a flaming account of the work there many of the people seem to be ripe for the gospel and ready to receive us i humbly hope before long about seven preachers of us will spread seven or eight hundred miles and preach in as many places as we are able to attend lord make us humble watchful and useful to the end of our lives april twenty three brother w set off for new york april twenty four i preached in philadelphia with freedom and power april twenty five preached the people with some sharpness in the evening i kept the door met the society and read mr wesley's epistle to them tuesday twenty eight i intended to go out of town but could not get a horse so i stayed for brother w and heard that many were offended at my shouting them out of society meeting as they had been greatly indulged before but this does not trouble me while i stay the rules must be attended to and i cannot suffer myself to be guided by half-hearted methodists an elderly friend told me very gravely that the opinion of the people was much changed within a few days about methodism and that the quakers and other dissenters had laxed their discipline that none but the roman catholics kept it up with strictness but these things do not move me wednesday twenty nine set out for burlington where i met with brother w and brother k and found the people there very lively two persons have obtained justification under brother w and a certain dr t a man of dissipation was touched under brother w's preaching last night i admire the kindness of my friends to such a poor worm as i oh my god remember them remember me thursday thirty i humbly hope the word was blessed to a large number of people who attended while i preached at the courthouse set out for philadelphia but about a mile from the city found that the bridge could not be crossed on horseback so i left my horse and walked to the ferry brother w took the horse and went to burlington on his way to york was desired to attend the execution of the prisoners at chester and j k went with me 
we found them penitent and two of the four obtained peace with god and seemed very thankful i preached with liberty to a great number of people under the jail wall the sheriff was friendly and very kind j k preached at the gallows to a vast multitude after which i prayed with them the executioner pretended to tie them all up but only tied one and let the rest fall one of them was a young man about fifteen we saw them all afterward and exhorted them to be careful we returned to philadelphia the same night and i gave an exhortation tuesday may five set out for burlington again and preached to a serious people but how is my soul troubled that i am not more devoted oh my god my soul groans and longs for this may six my heart was much humbled but the lord enabled me to preach with power in my soul thursday seven visited some prisoners and one of them who is to be tried for his life seemed much affected in the evening i preached and felt my heart much united to this people next morning set off for philadelphia and got in time enough for intercession after which i visited a sick friend who rested her soul on god and then i preached in the evening sunday ten preached in the morning attended two places of worship in the day preached again at night and had a comfortable time in meeting the society monday eleven was much stirred up and found an increase of life in visiting the society and then preached in the evening tuesday twelve set off for the jerseys my mind enjoys sweet peace and the love of god it is my desire to be entirely devoted to god who opens the hearts of people to receive me and my heart to deliver his counsel to them wednesday thirteen preached at three o'clock on behold i stand at the door and knock oh what a time of satisfaction and power was this for my own soul when afterward to mr t s and many friends came at eight o'clock when i was enabled to preach with life End of section two.